Welcome to the fifth class of this fresh start in 3D modeling. In previous classes, here's what we have covered. In class one, we learned some fundamentals about 3D design. We went through the Cinema 4D interface. We learned some important modeling tools and we understood how subdivisions work. In class two, we learned how to model 3D products, starting with cylinders as our primitives. We also practiced by modeling four different products with their detailed covers. In class three, we learned how to create holes and extrude new shapes from an existing mesh. In class 4, we learned how to model a complete kettle by applying lessons from previous classes. In this class, we will learn how to model a headset from a flat surface. We will also achieve this using the symmetrical modeling technique. There are several ways you can take part in this series and also support the series and the channel at large. First, you can kindly subscribe to the channel to get more classes and to get notified for subsequent series and 3D content. And you can also join my 3D community on Telegram for more conversations, tips, challenges, resource sharing, and growth opportunities. Then you can also grab the Fresh Start bundle of clay image references. It consists of over 25 clay product references to help you practice and model more products after you take part in this training. Also, if you're into NFTs, you can patronize my Vogbot NFT project on OpenSea that has a crazy utility where I create a free animated fashion NFT for every piece sold. So first, let's set up our image reference. So I'll divide these panels here into two views side by side. And I'll change the camera here to front. Then to bring our image reference in, I'll go to Options, Configure. On that back, I'll select these three buttons here to select my reference. And I'll select this headset here. So I'll change the alpha mode to normal. I'll drag this above our grid line here on the y-axis. And I'll just set this transparency to 78%. So the key thing to note when using symmetry in Cinema 4D is that we'll be working with the default grid line here. So we'll be modeling just this half of the product. And then we'll stop it exactly at this line here. So while we're using our grid line for our measurement, is so that the symmetry tool can know where to start mirroring the second half of our product from. So as I mentioned earlier, we'll be starting with the disc. So let's bring the disc in. So I'll go up here and I'll select this disc. So I'll drag this here and I'll just rotate it to fit this reference here. So this will be my starting point, this line here. So I'll go to our disc here in our perspective view. We can just expand that for now. So let's change our display to see our lines. So let's select this disc again to bring the properties here. So for the disc segment, I'll set that to 1. Then for the rotational segment, I'll set that to 10. So this is what I should have. So I'll make this editable by hitting C on my keyboard. Then we can just collapse these panels back to see what we have. So what I'll be doing to start extruding our shape here is that I'll first define how wide I want this top area to be. So I'll select these two points. Then I can just scale them in the way I want. So I'll also drag them up this way and I can also drag this down this way. So see I'm satisfied with this length. I'll just select these two edges here and we can start extruding. So I'll hold control and then I'll just drag this upwards and I'll simply extrude the edges along the path of this reference. So I can come back to my points and I can just select these points and move them up. So I'm using my rectangular selection tool. You can hit zero on your keyboard to bring that tool up. So for this top area, we need to make sure it's snapped perfectly to this grid line here. So to do that, let's enable our snap tool. So I'll come here, I'll click and hold this down to bring this option. So I'll enable snap. Or I can hit Shift S to enable or disable the snap tool. Then also under the snap tool, I will enable work plane snap. I also enable grid point snap and I also enable grid line snap. I change this to my world coordinate system and then I can just drag to make it snap here. I need to snap at the grid line. Then I also drag this, and snap this that way. Then I also drag this and just snap this here. So as you can see, it says grid line snap. So to add our symmetry tool, I'll add the symmetry, then I'll drag and drop the disc into the symmetry. So I'll select the symmetry here, and then we can just check clamp points on axis. So to clamp the points here, and also delete any polygon that will show on this axis, so that this object will flow continuously. 
So now with the symmetry tool on, anything we do on this area will be reflected here. So let's see how that works. If I select all these points here and I begin to move them, you can see it's reflecting the same way on the other angle. So I want to put off my snap tool here. So I can hit Shift S to put my snap tool off or I can just go over here and put it off. So let's create some of these details here. So I'll go to my polygon mode. I'll hit Ctrl A on my keyboard. Then I'll hit D to bring my extrude tool. So here, I want to extrude this, but I want to retain this polygon. So I'll check create caps here. Then I'll left click and drag this outwards this way. Then I'll also do the same thing in here. I'll go to my live selection tool. Make sure only select visible elements is checked. And I'll just select these polygons here. So make sure you selected the polygons on the inside here. So before I extrude that, I'll just extrude the faces inwards on the surface a little. So I'll hit I. And I'll just drag this inwards just a little so I can create an interesting detail there. So now let's hit D on our keyboard to extrude this. But here we don't need caps. So let's uncheck it and then extrude this without caps. So before we continue, let's make sure we work on this connection here. So temporarily, I'll uncheck the symmetry. And I'll select our disk. So first, I want to delete the polygons we have here. So I'll just select this and I'll hit delete. Then I'll go over here. I will enable my snap tool and in my point mode using my live selection tool I'm making sure my coordinate system is in world I'll select drag and drop this point to snap with the grid line here so I'll come here and uncheck this and I'll select this point here I'll drag that and drop this one's already snapped drag and drop this on the grid line so we can disable our snap now Enable our symmetry tool and we can continue shaping our mesh. So let's shape this area. So we'll use this new point that we've extruded over here and we'll drag it down to this point. So I'll use my live selection tool. Make sure this is unchecked here. Then once I select that, I'll just drag this on the y-axis. And I can drag this to fit here. Then drag these other areas to fit also. So next, before we create our subdivision, let's create this ear area here. So to do this, we'll be using a cylinder. So let's drop a cylinder. And I'll just rotate and scale that to match our reference. Once I rotate, I'll also change my coordinate system to local. For the segments of this cylinder, I can change this to 12 or 14, just because I majorly need a perfect circle. So I'll make the cylinder editable by hitting C on my keyboard. Then I'll hit U and O to optimize. I'll go to my polygon mode, select these polygons here, and I'll just start scaling this appropriately. So I'm scaling this uniformly, and I'll drag this up here, scale this. So I'll extrude this again, hold control on my keyboard, and then drag this. So I'll hit I to extrude this inwards. I'll hit W to change my coordinate system so that my gizmo matches my rotation. Then I'll just drag this upwards a little bit. Then I can hit I again. Then I'll drag this inwards this way. Then I can hit I again. I'll just drag this inwards finally. So let's also add the symmetry to this object here. So I'll go over here, drop my symmetry tool and drag this cylinder into the symmetry. So one last detail on the body here. I'll select this disk, go to my polygon mode, then I'll use my loop selection to select this loop here. Then I'll just extrude this outwards this way. Then I'll just scale this inwards like this. So now we can add our subdivision surface tool and also add more loop cuts. So let's select this symmetry here and hold Alt and add our subdivision surface. Let's also do that here, add our subdivision surface. So this is what we have. Let's add more loop cuts to this ear area so that it forms properly. So let's start adding loop cuts. So I'll select the first disk here. We can actually expand this. So I'll bring my loop cut to M and L. Then I'll begin adding loop cuts to these areas. So I'll add a loop cut here. I'll add a loop cut here. Add a loop cut here. I'll add a loop cut here. So let's see what we have. So let's go to this other object here. So we can uncheck the subdivision surface so that doesn't look confusing. 
so i'll add a loop code here i'll add another loop code here add one more here let's see how that looks so we can also add an interesting detail at this area so if i go to my polygon mode and i just select this loop here i can hit i to extrude this inwards a little then i can hit d on my keyboard make sure this create caps is unchecked and i can just extrude this inwards a little bit so maybe i can set that to minus 1.5 so if we turn our subdivision surface back on this is what this should look like so maybe one more cut to my add might just be cut here so i'll go back to our object mode and let's preview what we have so one thing i might do might just be to drag this particular cylinder upwards this way So remember, you can always make these generators editable by hitting C on your keyboard or just come in here to click this and you'll now have your subdivision surface and symmetry applied to your mesh. So take for instance, I want to make these two generators apply on this object. I'll make sure the subdivision render is set at 2 with the editor. Then if I hit C on my keyboard, everything here is applied to this disk so I can take this disk away from the object and just delete this subdivision surface. So if I select this disk, you can see that there's no more symmetry tool. Everything has not been applied to my mesh. Thank you for joining this class. In our next class, we'll cover basic animation, material creation, lighting, and rendering. So ensure you subscribe. And remember, you can support this initiative by grabbing the product reference bundle in the description below. And you can also support by getting a VogueBot NFT on OpenSea, where you also get a free animated fashion NFT for every piece bought. All this information can be found in the description below.